What's up guys, Mikkel here, and there has been a whole bunch of talk around Ripple and Fed now, and a whole bunch of speculation on whether or not Ripple is involved in this program. Well, in this video, I want to show you a conversation I actually had with an artificial intelligence program earlier today about whether or not Ripple was involved in FedNow, and if Ripple was, how would they be involved in FedNow? In this video, I want to share those results with you and then talk about just how big this entire market, this entire new financial system could possibly be. I think a lot of people are severely underestimating just how much money is going to flow into this brand new financial system make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that you are not going to want to miss it i also want to quickly talk about some setbacks for the sec we actually did get some new news today that i think you guys are really going to appreciate especially around what i believe is a decreased chance the ripple sec case will go to the supreme court this is something you are definitely going to want to see like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video out and just quickly talk about some setbacks for the SEC because we haven't seen too much news in regards to the ongoing court cases, but we have seen some things going on behind the scenes. I want to start out with this and this was actually put out by Ripple a couple months ago, but it looks like the rest of the cryptocurrency industry is finally catching up to what's happening here. Essentially, this is Jake Travinsky. I believe he's from the Blockchain Association and what he is pointing out here is that because Gary Gensler has already came out and said every single cryptocurrency is a security, he essentially has already prejudged the status of every cryptocurrency on the market, and that is something he is not allowed to do. The reason he is not allowed to do that is because the SEC commissioners, and Gary Gensler is one of the commissioners, are supposed to vote on whether or not they bring an enforcement action on whether a token is a security or not. So if Gary Gensler has already come out and prejudged all these cryptocurrencies, he's clearly not neutral, and the law thus says he should not be allowed to vote on future enforcement actions. Now, is Gary Gensler going to listen to this? I highly doubt he even cares. I think Gary Gensler is perfectly happy breaking as much rules as possible, and he's probably just going to laugh at something like this. I will say though, it is just one more thing that is going to put some pushback on Gary Gensler. It's one more thing that might encourage him to leave the SEC at a quicker pace. But most importantly, I think this just really shows what kind of guy Gary Gensler is. Gary Gensler is constantly making small mistakes like this. Remember, Gary Gensler is not a lawyer, so I can easily see why he would make these kinds of mistakes. But just think back to when he first took office at the SEC. He essentially came out and told Congress in a congressional meeting that the SEC did not have the power to regulate cryptocurrencies. He quickly realized his mistake and then tried to turn back on that. The only reason I even bring this up is because Gary Gensler is constantly making these super bold statements, but at the end of the day, a lot of the things he says aren't even backed up by the law. I think we have seen that many times in the cryptocurrency space, and I think we all just need to understand that when Gary Gensler says something, it is not necessarily true, and really, it's just his personal opinion and he doesn't even have a legal background. So now I want to move on and comment on one other thing before we get into the Fed now stuff. And this was actually from JW Verrett. I don't want to get into anything political in this video, but if you have been watching the Supreme Court recently, they have been very bold in a lot of their decisions. JW Verrett tweeted out earlier today, the Supreme Court is not afraid to substantially amend or strike down the Howey test. Believe that. And he was citing another case that happened earlier today. So the reason why this is so significant is because the SEC is really playing with fire if they were to bring a cryptocurrency case to the Supreme Court. Right now, the only saving grace for the SEC if they lose the Ripple case is that it's in a low-level court and it's not going to create too much of a binding authority amongst other courts. So essentially, the SEC could still get away with calling other cryptocurrency securities, and as long as it's tried in the same level court, it wouldn't be too impactful for the SEC. It wouldn't be too detrimental if they lost a Ripple case. But if the SEC was actually to appeal this case to the Supreme Court, well, the SEC could end up digging themselves into a massive hole. 
because if the Howey test is made more specific at the Supreme Court level, and as we have seen, the Supreme Court is perfectly happy making these very bold rulings, this could substantially limit the SEC's power because essentially most of the SEC's power is derived from the Howey test and the SEC is advantaged by the fact that the Howey test is very broad. The SEC can kind of apply it to anything and say, oh, well, it pretty much fits in here, so this is a security. If we had a cryptocurrency case go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court amended the Howey test to make it more specific to better cover what a security is and isn't, that would be a massive loss for the SEC and might just be a risk they are not willing to take. Overall, I think this is pretty good news in just showing that the SEC really doesn't have an incentive to let this case go to the Supreme Court. I have a feeling the SEC, regardless of the decision by Judge Torres, is going to be incentivized to try to stop this case from going on into the future. So now I want to move on and talk about FedNow and Ripple. And what I think is going to be so interesting about this segment is this actually isn't my research. This is actually just a conversation I was having with an artificial intelligence program. And just so you guys know, the artificial intelligence program I was using was actually Google's BARD program. And what is so interesting about this is Google BARD is actually known for being extremely accurate and not hallucinating. An issue with ChatGPT is actually that it will just make up facts and pretend like they're real. But as far as I know, that does not happen with Google Bard. So I am going to assume this information is up to date and accurate. So Google Bard said, as of March 2023, the following companies have been announced that they are integrated into FedNow. And what I thought was so interesting about the response I'm about to read to you is that all I asked Google Bard was what companies are working slash integrated with FedNow. And this is what it said. As of March 2023, the following companies have been announced that they are integrated into FedNow. ACI Worldwide, Pfizer, Jack Henry Associates, Plaid, Ripple, Synapse FI, and Temenos. Now, it says right here, these companies are providing a variety of services to FedNow, such as software, processing, fraud detection, customer support. The FedNow network is still under development and is expected to be launched in 2023. Once it is launched, it will be available for all financial institutions. It's important to note that the list of companies integrated into FedNow is not exhaustive. As the FedNow network continues to develop, more companies are expected to be integrated into the network and offer services to support instant payments. But what I thought was so interesting about what it just told me is there was no prompt to ask anything about Ripple and XRP. I was just asking, give me some companies that are integrated into FedNow, and Google Bard went out of its way to say, Ripple is integrated into FedNow. Now, this is just what the artificial intelligence program was telling me, but I thought that was extremely telling. It has no way of knowing that I'm some Ripple and XRP fanboy. It's not just trying to show me something I want to see. It is telling me that Ripple is integrated into FedNow. So then I went on and asked it another question. I asked it specifically, what is Ripple's role in FedNow if it was integrated? It said Ripple is a company that develops blockchain based payment technology. It has been involved in the development of FedNow, a new instant payment system being developed by the Federal Reserve. Ripple has not been officially selected as a technology provider for FedNow, but is one of several companies that have been invited to participate in the development of the system. Ripple has been working with the Federal Reserve to develop a prototype for FedNow now that uses the RippleNet network. RippleNet is a global network of financial institutions that uses Ripple's blockchain technology to send and receive payments. The network is already being used by banks and financial institutions in over 70 countries. If Ripple is selected as a technology provider for FedNow, it would mean that banks and other financial institutions that participate in the system would be able to use RippleNet to send and receive instant payments. This would make it easier for banks to connect to FedNow and offer instant payment services to their customers. However, it's important to note that Ripple has not been yet officially selected as the technology provider for FedNow. The Federal Reserve is still in the process of evaluating different technologies, and it's not clear exactly which company will be selected. If Ripple is not selected as a technology provider for FedNow, it could still play a role in the development of the system. Ripple has a lot of experience in developing blockchain-based technology, and it could provide the Federal Reserve with valuable insights and experience. Overall, Ripple is a company that is well positioned to play a role in the development of FedNow. It has the technology, the experience, and the expertise to help the Federal Reserve develop a safer, secure, and more efficient instant payment system. 
So guys, regardless of what you think of what I just read to you, you have to understand how fascinating this is. None of this was queued up by me at all. This was me simply asking, give me some partners of the FedNow program. You gave me Ripple. Okay, tell me how Ripple would be integrated. I thought this was absolutely fascinating, and I will give my own speculation on this. I have a feeling there are going to be multiple of these providers that all play a role in developing the FedNow system. Maybe Ripple's role will be more specifically focused on cross-border and international payments, and then you might have someone like Temenos more focused on domestic payments. Either way, the simple fact that Ripple is one of the companies being directly mentioned as working with the Federal Reserve on this program and being poised to be positioned to be one of the leading providers is absolutely outstanding and I think really goes to show that we are not dealing with some random small fintech company. We are dealing with a company that is literally in the process of putting a dent in the universe. And I want to finish this video off and just talk about one last thing because all we were talking about there was payments. But there is so much more to this new financial system than just payments. There is tokenization of entire asset classes. Kevin Cage put out a tweet earlier today. Swift estimates volumes of tokenized assets could reach 24 trillion by 2027. BCG estimates by 2030 tokenization of global illiquid assets could reach 16 trillion and as high as 68 trillion. The reason I'm reading this is because we are going into a new financial system, a financial system where assets are going to be tokenized that have never been tokenized or never been assigned liquid value before. We are going to see public blockchains absorb all this value as these assets are issued on the internet of value. I think XRP is going to be a leader for this transformation and as we watch the rush to tokenize these assets on public blockchains, we are going to see assets like XRP increase exponentially to cover the massive amount of liquidity injected into these platforms. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Nickel out.